Welcome to Stories and Sips. I'm Barry Chandler. In today's episode, we're going to do a deep dive into a beloved Irish whiskey brand. I have it here beside me, Powers Irish Whiskey. I have the Three Swallow uh, Single Pot Still Edition here. We're going to dive into that. I'm going to sip slowly on this magnificent drink throughout the episode. But before we dive into the history and the stories behind Powers Irish Whiskey, I want to share with you a new development that uh, launched on storiesandsips.com within the last week. So I've been sharing with you across my social media channels the development in the number of distilleries that have popped up across Ireland. I mentioned uh, how when I was growing up in the 1980s in Cork, uh, the Middleton Distillery was the only distillery in the Republic of Ireland. There was Bushmills in Northern Ireland, but Middleton Distillery was the only one. And that was uh, quite a come down from the hundreds of distilleries we saw in the 17 and 1800s in Ireland. Today, we're delighted to see that there is a resurgence in not just the demand for Irish whiskey, but independent distilleries are popping up to meet the growing demand for Irish whiskey worldwide. Today in Ireland, there are 31 operating Irish whiskey distilleries. Now, that's the most that have been in existence in over 100 years and is a thing to be celebrated. Now, with this growth in the number of distilleries comes the growth in the number of questions that people have about these distilleries. Where are they? Uh, when are they open? What whiskies do they produce? What's the story behind them? So I've been working on a labor of love over the past few months to develop the uh, interactive guide to Ireland's Irish whiskey distilleries. And so last week we launched it live on storiesandsips.com, a map and a listing of every distillery that's currently operating in Ireland uh, with uh, stories, the stories behind the distilleries, episodes of stories and sips that mention the distilleries, reviews from visitors to the distilleries, inc- and uh, as well as that, we've got, of course, facts about the distillery, as well as the brands that are produced there. There will be more distilleries popping up over the next few months and years, we hope, and as they do, we're going to add them to our map. So it's a wonderful resource that is uh, only in its infancy, launched last week, and is going to grow over time. We're going to add more features, and we're going to use it, or help you use it, as a tool to plan your trip around Ireland, or even to Ireland, uh, taking in all of the distilleries you want to see, and the great sites and things you can do around them. So I encourage you to visit storiesandsips.com, and you'll see a link right there on the homepage to Irish, all the Irish whiskey distilleries. So please explore it, and let me know what feedback that you have. In today's episode, though, we're going to focus on Powers Irish Whiskey, a beloved Irish whiskey brand that has been in the news in the Irish whiskey world a lot lately, and mainly because the brand is going through a refresh or a repackaging. So this bottle that you see here on the uh, on the video, if you're listening on podcast, you can't see it, but I am referring, of course, to the iconic shape of the Powers bottle, the tall bottle that is so so familiar to so many of us who have grown up in Ireland. This bottle is disappearing and being replaced with a new style. And the rebrand, like any rebrand, has met with mixed reviews. Some Powers loyalists and those who are who have uh, sworn allegiance to their brand over the years uh, have come out in either defense or in protest at the new look, the new color scheme, and uh, all that change represents, be that good or bad. And I'm not going to weigh in on whether I think it's good or bad. All I will say is that I'm delighted to see that an effort effort being put into positioning powers in a way that's going to attract new drinkers because it's a wonderful drink. So it's a new packaging, but the same whiskey is inside, which is a good thing. The worst thing that could happen is that our beloved powers is going to change. So you're seeing a lot about that that packaging. And if you're watching on video, I'm sharing some images of those new bottles here now. And if you're listening on the podcast, you can visit the website to see them. But this is a, a new departure for Powers, and it's something that hopefully will introduce the brand to a new generation of, of, of drinker. So the Powers brand, of course, why there's so much discussion about it and why it's causing such uproar is because it is a beloved brand. It's an Irish whiskey brand that is maybe one of the most loved, the most connected to by Irish people. For a long time, it was the best-selling Irish whiskey in Ireland. For, uh, and, and well before that, it was the best-selling, not just Irish whiskey in the world, but one of the best-selling whiskies in the world back in its heyday of the 1800s. A lot has changed since then. Today, the behemoth that is Jameson has overtaken powers. 
uh, in terms of its global sales because that's what uh, that's the brand that uh, Pernod Ricard, the parent company of both Jameson and Powers, put their marketing dollars behind to take it globally. But the Irish people have a great connection with Powers, and I want to talk in this episode about the reasons why there's such a connection, because it, on the surface, may seem like an irrational connection. And I'm here in the United States, and I'm sharing the story of Powers, and to many Americans, Powers is a relative newcomer to the Irish whiskey scene. Of course, we've had it in Ireland for many, many years, since 1791, but in the US, it's a relatively new addition to their shelf. And so sharing the story about why it's so beloved instantly has people falling in love with the brand that is Powers. So last year, I shared an episode, 10 Reasons to Fall in Love with Powers Irish Whiskey, and it got a great response. And since that time, I've had the chance to learn more about the brand. I was invited to the, um, the archive in the distiller's cottage in the Middleton Distillery, where all of the, the treasure trove of artifacts from the Powers family, the Powers original Powers uh, Distillery in John's Lane in Dublin are. And Carol Quinn, the archivist, was very kind to share uh, very generous with her time to share uh, the stories behind the Powers family. And it became immediately apparent to me after spending time with Carol, who has a, f a fantastic way of sharing her passion, it became immediately clear to me why Powers is and was such a beloved brand in Ireland. And I want to share some of those stories here in this episode. Now, growing up in Ireland, uh, I think you, you'll agree with me, those of you who have done the same, that you were probably one of three houses. You were either a Jameson house, a Paddy house, or a Powers house. And that meant that if there was a bottle of whiskey in the house, it was one of those three things. It was a bottle that was taken out for special occasions. It was taken out to celebrate, to commiserate, to laugh, to cry, for any occasion that needed something stiff, uh, Powers or Jameson or Paddy would have been pulled out of the cabinet. In the Chandler house, we were a Powers house. And I still have memories of Sunday afternoons growing up after a lovely roast dinner, the bottle of Powers Gold label coming out of the drinks cabinet and hearing the, the, the clink open of the, the old screw, screw top on the Powers Gold label as it went into Irish coffees after dinner. And every time I smell Powers Gold label today, I'm transported back to that memory, to that Sunday afternoon after a roast dinner at the end of, end of an afternoon and the Irish coffees are coming out and it's a lovely memory that I have and many others have such a memory. So Powers is embedded in many of our memories and that's often the way when, you're a, when, you, when your house is a certain house in terms of the whiskey that it's, it's loyal to. It's often passed down from generation to generation and sometimes you don't even realize why we're a Powers house or a Paddy house but yeah, we were a Powers house. So I have a long uh, history or kind of a, a connection with the brand. But when I spent time with Carol, Carol Quinn, the archivist in, in Middleton, um, she shared with me some of the stories that go back hundreds of years. So, of course, we know that Powers, the brand itself, was started by James Power in 1791 in John's Lane, right in the Liberties in the heart of Dublin. He was an innkeeper, and he started his own distillery, which very quickly became one of the largest distilleries in the world. And this distillery brought great wealth to the Powers family, to James and his son John, and ultimately the rest of the family that, that benefited from such growth and such, um, and such wealth that came along with it, they, were, they became very wealthy. And they could have, uh, this wealth it could have done one of two things. One, it could have made them uh, very distant and very removed from the day-to-day -day operations. It could have removed them from the people that worked for them. Or the, la the, the, the other thing that could have happened is that uh, they use that wealth to do great things, to do good and to take care of their people. And of course, with the Powers family, we now know they did the latter. They used their wealth in very good ways. And the things they did with their wealth changed the lives of the people that worked for them, changed the lives of people that didn't work for them, and changed the course of Irish whiskey history, and indeed the history of many parts of Dublin and ultimately Middleton because of the good that they did. So one of the words that jumped out at me after looking through the artifacts that Carol shared was this word heart. And it's a word that is easily thrown around on marketing materials and brochures, but it's something that rings very true to Powers. There was heart in everything the Powers family did and how they took care of their people and how they operated their business. And one example of that that is a remarkable example is as the distillery was growing in, in, the, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, they needed more and more laborers to come and work the, the, uh, the distillery. They needed manual laborers, those who were used to a, a hard day's work. And so they looked to the countryside. They looked to those who had worked on farms, those who were used to 
lifting heavy machinery, working from dawn until dusk, and they attracted many of these laborers to come and work in the heart of Dublin. And for many of them, this would have been the first time that they saw concrete, that they saw so many buildings so close together, and also the first time that they maybe wouldn't have had the chance to grow their own food right there, living in a brick and concrete jungle. Um, there wasn't much opportunity to grow the potatoes and the carrots and the parsnips and the turnips or whatever it was that they grew in their plot of land outside of the city. So the Powers family recognized that this was something that was important to the workers. And rather than overlook it and concentrate on the great wealth that they had accumulated, the Powers family decided to take the roofs of some of their warehouses, their maturation warehouses, which were flat, and lay soil on the warehouse roof so that the workers could actually till the farm, a farm on the roof of the warehouses, right in the city centre of Dublin. And here's a great picture that I'm showing on the video here of Carol uh, showing, me, showing me a photograph uh, of the roof of the distillery uh, warehouse and the grass growing there and the farmer, or the, the labourers working the field on top of the warehouse. And this is an incredible thing to do. It was not necessary, but again, the Powers family were uh, very interested in taking care of their people because they recognised that their growth and the wealth that they had generated and the growth of their, of their distillery was down to the people and they needed good people who were loyal and took care of the distillery in the way that they needed to. So powers are very much about giving back to those that work for them. A second story that Carol shared with me which, which stood out to me and, and shows how much further than the distillery walls the Powers family, family's generosity went was that they had a, a home in Wexford. So uh, a number of hours, it would have been quite a bit of distance back in the days of horse and carriages then Wexford down the southeast of Ireland. They had a home where they would have uh, spent their weekends or their, their holidays. And as they would have gone from Dublin to their home in Wexford, they would have passed many fields and many farmers. They would have seen the work that, that other farmers were doing in the fields and the land around their home in Wexford. And one of their, their observations was that farming had not progressed very much in Ireland in a way that perhaps was taking advantage of innovations that were happening elsewhere. And so what the Powers family did was that they paid for all of the farmers who worked land, not even on their uh, estate, but surrounding their estate, they paid for the farmers to get a train to go from Wexford up to Dublin to the agricultural show, which took place in the RDS, the Royal Dublin Showgrounds, every year. And not only did they pay for these farmers to go to the agricultural show and learn new things about farming, they paid for their food, they paid for their lunch, their dinner, the train home, and they didn't have to do any of this. There was no immediate benefit to the Powers family. But they recognized that with great power, forgive the pun, comes great responsibility. And they wanted to take care of the people around them. And so they had a tremendous effect on the land, on, on the, those that worked the land, the landowners and the farmers, the very poor farmers at the time that worked the land. So another great example of the Powers family taking care of the people. I think that one deserves a little sip when I think about the next story. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the brand or who have a bottle of Powers on your shelf or more than one bottle, which you should have, you will notice that on every bottle of Powers, there is a glass design embossed on the neck of the bottle. And the design is of three birds, three swallows. And there are three swallows marked on every single bottle of Powers that leaves the distillery. And for a long time, it wasn't clear or obvious why that was until Carol discovered in the archives the reason behind the Three Swallows. And it's a remarkable story. So in Dublin, the Powers family were not just known for their incredible whiskey. They were not just known for this massive distillery and the good that they did. They were known for the quality of their horses and carriages. Long before we had Uber or Lyft or taxis, horses and carriages were used to take the wealthy around the city. So the Powers stable would have been on the distillery grounds and they would have had people taking care of those horses and carriages at all hours of the day and night. So if the Powers family needed to go anywhere to one of their parties or functions or needed to go to their stately home, there were staff on hand ready to take them in their horse and carriage. Now if you've been to Ireland, you'll realise and remember that it is cold and wet most of the year. And again, the Powers family wanted to take care of those that work for them. So whenever they would call on this horse and carriage, there would be three horsemen on every carriage. And they could be going out in the middle of the, the night, they could be going out in the snow, and it would have been co a cold time to be transporting people around the country. So the Powers family made sure that every one of those three horsemen each had a small little measure of Powers Irish whiskey. 
so that when, in the dead of night or when it was extra cold, they could take a sip of this whiskey and it would be enough to keep them warm, but not enough so that they couldn't do their job. So there was one swallow for every man, so there was three swallows on every uh, carriage. And hence, we have the three swallows on every bottle today. Which I think is a remarkable story, and I love how they've commemorated it still to this day on the bottles, and again, acknowledging uh, how the Powers family might have thought differently about those that worked with them and took care of them. Now, Powers' gold label is perhaps the most well-known of the uh, Powers' lineup. It has been around for uh, since the, the late 1800s, and Powers' gold label at one time would have been a single pot still whiskey. Today, it's a blended whiskey, but back in the 1800s and for uh, most of the 1900s, it was a single pot still whiskey, a heavier style of whiskey, but it was the most sought-after whiskey in the world. Kings, princes, emperors demanded Powers' gold label. And as such, it was an expensive whiskey. In fact, so expensive that, and so luxurious a product was it, that the gold label on the bottle was actually made with ground copper. No expense was spared in putting together the labeling, the design, even the little advertising cards that would um, advertise this whiskey in all corners of the world. So for many, Powers Gold label in Ireland was out of reach. It was too expensive. So in come uh, the Powers family with yet another innovation that met the demand for their whiskey, even amongst those who couldn't afford a full bottle of Irish whiskey. So in the early uh, part of the 20th century, in the 1900s, Powers came out with a unique innovation. And I have one here. The miniature bottle. So any time you fly across the Atlantic or across uh, the Channel to England from Ireland and you have a little vodka or a whiskey on the flight, you can thank the Powers family for this innovation. This was known as the Baby Power and it was uh, invented to meet the needs of those who couldn't afford a full bottle. It was also easy for a woman to put in her purse and it was something that uh, instantly became a hit. It was small enough to be affordable and also easily transportable. And back in the day, this small little 70 milliliter bottle would have had, uh, wouldn't have had a screw cap like we have here today, but rather it would have had a cork and a baby little corkscrew, as you can see in the picture here on the video. And Carol's got a great example of that in the archive. So the Powers uh, baby power, we, can, we have the family to thank for this miniature bottle, which I think is a remarkable innovation. So the rebrand and repackaging and this new shape bottle that's coming out today is not the first time there's been a new bottle. This little new bottle came out back in the 1920s and uh, has changed the landscape for uh, consumption of alcohol, certainly in planes anyway. So you can imagine with all of these initiatives and efforts that the Powers family made to take care of their people, there was great loyalty in return. If you worked for Powers, you were proud of it. You wore the diamond P in a lapel pin when you marched around the city in parades. You told people that you worked for the Powers uh, family. You told them you worked at the Johns Lane Distillery. There was tremendous uh, loyalty and passion for what they did and for, for what the family did. And to be able to say that you worked there was a tremendous badge of honor. And for many generations of the same family worked at the distillery and the father handed down the job to the son and on and on. Now, of course, distilling ceased in John's Lane Distillery in uh, the mid-1970s and transferred to Middleton in County Cork, where it still continues distillation today. Um, Powers is seeing a resurgence in demand, certainly here in the United States. There are three uh, permanent additions to the range. Powers Gold Label, which is a blended whiskey. Powers Three Swallow, which is a single pot still whiskey and maybe the best value with single pot still whiskey in the world. This was less than $40, $39.99. Uh, which is remarkable. And then you have the flagship product, Powers uh, John's Lane Edition, which is a 12-year-old single pot still whiskey and a, to commemorate the original home of the distillery in Dublin. So having had a chance to spend time in the archive and hearing the amazing stories, seeing these incredible artifacts that Carol shared with me, it's certainly given me a better understanding of why the brand was so loved, why the workers were so loyal, why Ireland fell in love with not just the whiskey, but the people behind the brand, the Powers family, why they were so revered, so loved. Um, it's clear now why there's so much passion for the brand. And it's clear now why there's such consternation, perhaps, or, yeah, really it's just passion behind uh, people's love for it, where, when you see that them coming out talking about the new packaging uh, and whether they like it or they don't. Here's the good news. Powers is getting an infusion of effort and interest and resources from Irish distillers, from the Middleton Distillery, which is a great thing to see. And I hope it means that more 
powders ends up on more shelves and in more hands because if it does, it means people are interested in the whiskey and maybe they're interested in the amazing stories that go back to the late 1700s. Carol once shared a, a great nugget with me as I, as I uh, toured the archive with her. She said, we don't have to make up any stories here in Middleton. The truth is far more interesting. And I think the truth about powers is tremendously interesting and something that I will continue to, to learn more about and to find out more about. And you never know, maybe I'll get another invitation back to the distiller's cottage, to the archive, to find, uh, find out a little bit more. And if I do, I'll share those stories with you. So thank you for indulging me as I sit here and drink whiskey and tell you stories about my, one of my favorite Irish whiskey brands. I encourage you to visit storiesandsips.com. Please check out the distillery map and all of the resources that are going to help you find your way around the Irish distilleries. There are more distilleries coming, which we look forward to. Um, but there are also many great distilleries that laid the way. John's Lane, that produced Powers Whiskey for almost 200 years, was one of those. So we salute and toast Powers and John's Lane Distillery today. Sláinte. So